What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, y'all know I gotta do my uh, thoughts and opinion video on WrestleMania 38 Night One, and I must say, good job, Vince. Good job. Night One, in my opinion, exceeded my expectation. And I think a lot of you guys that was in the chat with me and True Billy tonight, I think it exceeded y'all expectations as well. I was not thinking night one was going to be this enjoyable on paper when you look at it it's not it wasn't supposed to be that enjoyable in my opinion i think there's probably maybe three matches that i was interested in obviously i was interested if they were going to actually bring in cody Rhodes, which they did to face Seth rollins um the stone cold kevin owens i'm thinking that's only just going to be like a segment a couple of uh, stunners here and there and that's it that hurt, turned into a whole match and then uh, the Bianca Belair and uh, Becky Lynch match that was another match I was somewhat looking forward to and everything else I, I really didn't care for but all the matches most of the matches let me not say all most of the matches exceeded my expectations we're gonna get into it man we're gonna go through match by match talk about what I liked and what I didn't like for the most part and we're gonna get into this uh my thoughts and opinions video man so let's get right into the nitty-gritty Start with the SmackDown Tag Team Champion uh, ship match. Usos versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, and Rick Boogs. You knew who was going to win here. It doesn't make sense for uh, the Usos to be losing the title. It just doesn't make sense. They, they're The time when they lose the title, that's when we know Roman will probably be losing the championship at some point. So... They're keeping that momentum going as the longest reigning SmackDown Tag Team Champions of all time. Match was decent. Decent way to start off the show. Uh, I was thinking the Rig, uh, Rick Boogs injury was like a, a kayfabe injury, but I'm guessing apparently it it was a, a, legit, a legitimate injury and he, he will have to have surgery. So wishing him a speedy recovery. But uh, other than that, the match was solid. It was a nice little opener. Crowd, crowd was kind of getting into it. And uh, we were kind of getting into it as well. The right people won. It was one, two, three. Nice little opener match for night one. Uh, also, I want to say the, uh, the them announcing The Undertaker. Uh, one, them bringing out the class of 2022 WWE Hall of Fame class. And then The Undertaker being out there gave me goosebumps. It was beautiful to see. I still haven't checked out his speech. I won't be able to check it out, obviously, like doing a reaction, but I will check it out off camera. But uh, him just being out there one more time at WrestleMania gave me goosebumps. I just wanted to make that, uh, put that out there before I uh, forgot about it. So we got Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. Not going to lie to you. Did not really care for this match. I'm so glad that this feud is pretty much over. Um... It was kind of it was kind of just you know just run of a mill match for me something you would see on SmackDown. It did start to pick up towards the end of it. I started to enjoy it a little bit more. What made me really like start really investing into it is the fact that Drew McIntyre is the only person ever to kick out of the end of days, bro. No one has ever kicked out of his finishing move, and he kicked out. That was a moment. That was a WrestleMania moment because no one's ever kicked out of his move. Once he hit his finisher, you usually lost. But Drew McIntyre kicked out. I was, that's when things really picked up. Other, you know, other than that, the match was kind of, you know, it was, it was kind of lackluster. But once the, you know, they started getting towards the ending and definitely him kicking out of Baron Corbin's in the days, I thought that was, uh, fantastic i enjoyed that and it definitely brought up the match a little bit more but right person won baron corbin win i'm uh, not baron corbin uh drew mcintyre won and hopefully drew can get into a better feud going forward hopefully they're done with this right person won there uh mysterios versus miz and logan paul not gonna lie to you did not care for this match but they put on a decent show logan paul was not bad he uh, he 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 wasn't bad out there. I will give him the respect. They put on a good, decent show. The crowd was invested. I started getting invested, especially when Logan Paul started mocking Eddie Guerrero, doing the three amigos and doing, trying to do the frog splash off the top row, doing the little chest 
chest, shoulder movement. I was like, yo, he's a naturally good heel. And I called it. The Miz and Logan Paul was going to win. And guess what happened? They ended up winning. It was a solid match. Nice back and forth. Nice in-ring psychology. Um, uh, Dominic had a nice showing. Ray always has a nice showing. It was it was enjoyable. I really surprisingly enjoyed this match more than I expected. The Miz, Logan Paul winning. Of course, it left a sour taste in the mouth. But you know what? The Miz did us right. And gave Logan Paul a skull-crushing finale. The crowd went crazy. I went crazy. 10 out of 10 match. Just because of that. That was great. I love that. Don't know. It, it, it looks like they may be setting up the Miz and Logan Paul at some point. So... That's what it's looking like. You never know, but that was enjoyable, though. I, I will say, surprisingly enjoyable more than I expected. So, enjoyed that match. Raw Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Hands down, the best women's match of the night. Don't at me. Um, can we just say, Becky Lynch having a little, uh, little Marvel graphic? Like, if you guys watch the Marvel movies, and at the beginning of the movies, they show all the Marvel films. Or whatever and like this weird pattern that's exactly what becky lynch's little intro had and then she came out in a nice little escalade came out walked to the ramp bianca belair's entrance was so fucking cool it's cool for a multitude of reasons one tsu i grew up around tsu tsu is a hbcu college uh at one point i was even considering being in the band for those who don't know i used to be in the band uh, and i used to play drums I had a scholarship to be in the marching band at TSU at one point. I was thinking about going there. I've had family that worked up there. I've been up there plenty of times, been in their band hall. So to see TSU performing her theme song out there was such an awesome moment to see. That entrance was dope. I was like, they got to give her the win. Match was pretty much, I wouldn't say it wasn't high intense but it's like the pacing was good i enjoyed the pacing of this match the build was okay it was cool it wasn't the best i expected a little bit better from the build a little bit more but i was enjoying it for what it was and they they told a good story in this match they they really they even hit you with a quick scare thinking that um uh, becky lynch was gonna get a quick one like she did at SummerSlam against uh bianca belair and that was almost a, a close two fall but they they really started pacing it out man and it, it was it was great bro this match was very enjoyable and it's cool to say that bianca belair has had two back-to-back -back great matches at wrestlemania and she's won twice at wrestlemania she's undefeated at wrestlemania winning twice Winning the SmackDown's championship last year and winning the Raw's championship this year. Fantastic. Fantastic. I enjoyed this match. Hey, I don't know if they're going to continue the feud. Maybe they do continue the feud with her. I'm willing to bet. But ultimately, I enjoyed this. This was this was great. This is definitely worth your time on watching. If you haven't seen it, best women's match of the night. Don't at me. And the right person won in Bianca Belair. Uh, now this one right here. Seth Rollins comes out. We're trying to figure out who's his mystery opponent. They, boy, they, they, they definitely teased it. I was praying that it wasn't going to be <laughs> Shane McMahon or God forbid Goldberg. And when you find, oh, when you finally hear Cody's music that he had AEW, I was like, thank you. I was so glad that they got the rights to play the music and the crowd went insane. I went insane. Oh, my God, bro. They actually pulled the trigger. We've been hearing the rumors. We just wasn't sure if they were going to do it. And they pulled the trigger. And, boy, it was a momentous moment. And I enjoyed this match. Was it a slow burn? Yes, it was. The crowd kind of died down after initial, you know, him coming into the, to the, to the ring. But they started picking it up. They started picking it up, man. I like how Seth Rollins was talking. You you know, welcome welcome to the big leagues. You're in the big leagues now. This is my company. Like I was I was loving that. It was it was it was really nice. And just to see 
him hitting his father's old school moves with the bionic elbow. It's just, it was just a great, great build up. Like I said, it started off slow and it started building up even more and more to a nice crescendo. I love he kept hitting the crossroads. Oh man, he, he was hitting it over and over and over, bro. It was just, it was, it was nice, man. It was a hard hitting match uh, towards the end, uh, but bro, this was, this was great. This was, this was a a very great return to wwe for him and a in an enjoyable match i enjoyed this match so much it was fun this was fun this 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 gave me wrestlemania vibes for me personally i i will be streaming monday night raw i'm gonna let you guys know this now i'm gonna stream i have to i have to now so i'm gonna be streaming monday night raw so be on the lookout for that i just hope they maintain Cody's momentum. Please do not mess this up. Please don't mess this up, WWE. That's all I'm asking for. And do I think it's over between him and Seth? No, 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 no. I think Seth will be uh, getting at, at some point another rematch. So we will see how things playing out. But I'm just looking forward to the possible possible matches. Some of you guys are saying Age, uh, not AJ. Well, you, some of you guys are saying AJ versus Cody, but Edge versus Cody Rose. Sign me up, as you guys know. Like I like to say, enjoyable match. Right person won. Cody won. Uh, Cody won. He had to. He wasn't gonna lose coming back. So that that was great. All right. <sighs> Easily the worst match of the night. I was hoping this match would be good. It uh, it did not live up to expectations at all. This this match was boring. SmackDown Women's Championship match: Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. This match was boring. Did it have potential life to be good? Yes, but it was boring. It was, and I think what made this match boring is not. Because of the in-ring work, I think people just didn't care. Ultimately, people didn't care about this feud. Ronda has been cringe. Oh, my God. She has been cringe on the mic. Her microphone skills is not good when it comes to pro wrestling. Just not it hasn't been good. And I think people are just tired of Charlotte Flair. We know she's great in the ring, but people are just tired of the multiple championship reigns and stuff. Like, people are just tired of it. So, you got someone in Ronda that's coming off super cringe you don't really care you know at one point she didn't even look like she wanted to be here and then you have in other in the other corner you also have charlotte flair in which people just want the championship to be off her by any means and plus people didn't forget people didn't forget what ronda has said about wrestling fans which she has a point in what she was saying but people didn't forget that too so it was it was a lose lose i think maybe if the build-up was a little bit better Maybe if she had someone to talk for her in Ronda, maybe this could have worked. But this was dead on arrival. Crowd would get hyped about a certain spot. And there were some cool spots in the match. And then the crowd would just kind of fall down. And then the ending was just atrocious. The typical referee gets hit. Then Ronda applies an arm bar. Charlotte starts tapping like a, a mad person. And then all of a sudden... When she's trying to get the ref up or whatnot, the ref comes back too. Ronda gets hit with a surprise boot to the face. For And then the ref is able to hit the one, two, three. You're telling me a boot to the face caused Ronda Rousey to lose. And what just annoyed me in the grand scheme of things, she came back, won the Royal Rumble, to only lose to a boot to the face. In my mind, I'm like, there's no way. And I've been saying this. There's no way they brought her back to lose. Well, they brought her back to lose. Granted, this is not over, y'all. And that's what work, This that's what worries me more. This feud is not over. Best believe Ronda Rousey will get her rematch. And it's going to be a no disqualification match. And I think probably then. She'll win it. I'm guessing. Who fucking knows? I just want this feud to be over. I legitimately want this feud to be over. I, I do not care. I don't care. I, don't, I just don't care. This match was the worst match of night one. I think a lot of us can agree. You guys were destroying this match in the chat saying this was boring. And it was. 
a few few little good spots but other than that throw this throw this match away and of course the main event and this is why this was the main event i am so glad <laughs> charlotte flair and ronda was not the main event because that would have been awful stone cold steve austin kevin owens for the kevin owens show kevin owens comes out a lot of booze talking trash on texas you hear that glass break and i just i went back to the attitude there at this point there is nothing that can ruin this segment for me stone cold is stone cold he has not wrestled in over 19 years and i've been on the record saying i i don't think i would want to see stone cold wrestle i've said that a few times and some of you guys are like oh why could you say that i think i've said that because of the people that i've grew up watching and then seeing them wrestle as they got older past day primes and the matches that we've gotten it it, 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 it it's kind of scarred me kind of traumatized me because i don't like to see my favorite wrestlers i grew up watching look old and look like they don't belong out there we've seen it before we've seen it in the undertaker i think he should have stopped uh a while ago honestly he should have but i know he wanted to have better matches but his body couldn't or his opponents couldn't we've seen it with uh goldberg too when Goldberg came back initially, he looked pretty good. But then after a while, he started having longer matches. And you can tell that he can't go as go like he used to. You know what I'm saying? We've seen that in some of our favorite wrestlers. Where they sometimes they wrestle a little bit longer than they should. You know what I'm saying? It's only a handful that can still do it. Where it's, it's like they're not out there too much. And they're not doing too much. But they still somewhat can go. But I will say this. I can stand corrected. I am glad I got to see Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> wrestle one more time. Was it a traditional wrestling match? No, I don't I don't think he would have signed up for that. That's a little bit of different type of conditioning. It was more of what Stone Cold is used to. Just an all-out brawl. No holes bar match. I'm okay with that. And like I said, I can admit when I was wrong, and I was wrong. It was I was glad to see him in that environment. And he looked good out there as well. It was fun. Oh my God, this segment was fun. Him taking a bump onto a suplex onto the steep, onto the uh, concrete out by the crowd. Oh my God, just fantastic, bro. Him coming out there at the ATV, they're brawling up the ramp, they're brawling by the stage area, they're brawling by the announce area. He's taking beer to recharge himself. Oh, him getting stunned by Kevin Owens to a two count almost made my heart fall out of my chest. Him hitting the stunner on Kevin Owens. Him hitting the stunner on him again after the match was over. Him hitting the stunner on uh, Byron Saxon. Byron Saxon, you sold it like a champion. Corey Graves on commentary over there losing, his him, losing himself at seeing Byron Saxon getting stunned. This was just great, bro. This was just, this whole, this was attitude error at his max attitude error personified in stone cold steve austin can you say oh we're biased as a nostalgia act you got damn right and i will go on record and say i stand corrected i i said initially i would not want to see stone cold wrestling anymore you know what he made me eat my words i enjoyed that i enjoyed seeing him out there it wasn't a traditional wrestling match but I can say, I'm glad I was at least able to see it one more time. If we don't wrestle no more ever again, I'm okay with it. But this was great. This was this is how you end off WrestleMania. WrestleMania ended off with Stone Cold Steve Austin drinking a whole bunch of beer. And I loved it. Night one. You did your thing. Did your thing, Vince. I said on the stream, I give night one outside of the Drew McIntyre match, which... And it did pick up with the ending. I did enjoy the, the ending of that. And outside of um, Charlotte versus uh, Ronda being the low point of the show, everything else was surprisingly better than expected. And I gave this show, night one, an 8 out of 10 on paper. This should have been maybe 6 out of 10 at best. 7 if you're lucky. This was an 8 out of 10 show. Night one showed out. Ended off great. It started off good and it ended off fantastic. And I think it's one of those situations where on paper, it 
It did not look like it was going to be good. The go home shows did not live up to hype. And they exceeded our expectations. Well, at least they did with mine. Night one, eight out of 10 for me. Comment down below. Let me know. What do y'all give night 10 on a scale of one to 10? I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Uh, this was this was enjoyable. Also, let me know what was your favorite match of the night. My favorite match, I still got to give it to Cody and, and Seth Rollins. Enjoyed that match for what it was. And I'm looking forward to the story that they plan on telling with these two. Because I definitely don't think it's, it's over. And of course, Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. That's a close number two. Only because it's, it's Stone Cold. And I had fun with that match. That wasn't that was that was just a uh, uh, a nostalgia ride that I was enjoying every bit of it. It's nothing tactical about it. You're just there to see Stone Cold whoop some ass, man. So favorite match, gotta give it to uh, Cody and Seth, and then actually second favorite right under it, Stone Cold Kevin Owens. So fun. Uh, so let me know your favorite match of the night. Let me know also. What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? And do you guys think Night 2 can live up to this? Night 2, they have a tough one. Night 1, they showed out. I don't know if Night 2 can live up to it. Let's see if they will. I'm willing to give them a chance. I am. There's some good matches on that card that I'm looking forward to. So I hope they are able to live up to the hype because they got they got their, cut, their work cut out for them. But appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.